about it was that the uh, CIO uh, at the campus sent a note down saying that this was happening. And uh, since I, you know, he's interested in getting those series spread across, we've got six campuses. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we're using it here, but he's interested in uh, taking it to the other five campuses or whatever. So it's just, it's a, it's a great learning opportunity for me and maybe something that we'll expand with in a lar much larger way in the future um, at the school. Yeah, excellent. And I, you know, the, the cost savings when you move from, let's say a, your traditional smart board to Dose Siri, what type, of, what type of cost savings are you looking at? Well, that, you know, I really, I don't have a perspective on that at this time in the sense that, you know, I've got four licenses for the Dosseri, uh, you know, at a, about $30 a piece. Um, we have about, uh, I want to say about 75 smart boards uh, in the classrooms right now. Wow. Uh, well, that's just one campus. And we have, like I say, five. You know, and the, I, I'm at the largest campus that they have. Um, and and smart, smart boards retail how much each? 1500 <sighs> At least. At least that, but you know, you've, you've got the smart over, you, you've got the projector that you have to deal with, which is probably more than that. Yeah. Uh, you know, d where I'm at, I, I don't get into the cost of that very often. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we do most of the uh, purchases through the district office on a, on a large scale, you know, it's like. Yeah. Do you find that you have to recalibrate those smart boards constantly? The older ones, yes. The, the newer ones, not so much. You know, the older ones with the, uh, the newer ones have the short throw projectors. And I think just the fact that the technology has changed over, you know, over the last 10 years, so they're getting a, a better product, um, at least out to the field. Uh, now the older ones, you know, we've seen uh, some of my aides and stuff, you know, and the instructors, you know, they're, they're, um, going in and orienting um, about every uh, class or every other class. Yeah. But you're still stuck at the front of the room. They're still stuck at the front of the room, right. And, you know, that's something that, you know, maybe, maybe Dosario will give them an option to get out of the front of the room. <clears throat> well, uh, you know, guys, I got to tell you, um, you know, we're, we're going to get started <laughs> here, and I'll give you a little bit of background of, of, you know, who I am, where I came from, when I first got my hands on Doseri, how it really changed my business, um, not just from a sales perspective. I know the book screen to screen selling uh, might, might seem to be always just on sales, but really from um, my role as a professional speaker and as an educator who travels you know, all over the U.S. and in Canada, too. Um, you know, I have to look at different ways of being able to share information and engage participants in new ways so that um, even like I said earlier, and I, I'm not talking at others, we're talking together and we're having a conversation. And with, with any of the tools that I've experienced, um, you know, the one thing that I look for is usability. You know, am I able to perform the task? as quickly as possible with the least amount of mistakes or the time to perform that task is very quick. Out of all the techn all of the apps and whiteboard apps that I've experimented with, Dosiri has become my number one go-to for note-taking uh, because I'm a much more visual um, note-taker. Uh, you know, I, you know I, as, as a student, I bring I bring those series just not, without even without even using it on the on the, as, on the projector, using it to be able to take notes, <clears throat> and that that helps me learn at a much faster rate because sometimes if I just take notes on the computer where I'm typing on Evernote or another tool, that you know I'm more focused on what I'm typing rather than what I'm learning. You know, there and sometimes sometimes that there can be a disconnect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to go into sharing my screen and a way to start to facilitate this conversation, really show you the application of Doseri in, in, in a new way. Um, for those that, let's say, are watching, uh, we're just, just to let you know, we are recording this uh, for, for playback for the future so that way others can benefit. Uh, and we're gonna sh show the application of it. We're gonna answer questions and then kind of go back and forth in terms of 
how this will be relevant for you in your classroom. So uh, with, with that being said, I'm gonna go in to share my screen just like I would <clears throat> anything else. And whether I'm using a PowerPoint, whether I'm using a website, whether I have an Excel spreadsheet uh, or a PDF, let's say as the visual, <clears throat> It doesn't necessarily matter. What matters to me is that I'm able to facilitate the conversation in a way so that others can see the end learning objectives and how they're specifically ex executed. So right now I have the Doceri app opened under the screen share. So you, you're, you're gonna be able to see where, where, where I'm going with this. So uh, right now, just to kind of ask you real quickly, what do you, what do you see right now um, on, your, on your screen? Oh, it's, it's the happy face. Happy face. Yeah, happy face. And what I typically will do is ask others, especially in a remote uh, conversation, or let's say if I'm doing a webinar, I'll always ask, what can you see? Because I can't see through your computer unless I, you know, let's say have another one up. And so once I know that that's, 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 that's available, then I can start to move forward. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to go here and I'm going to actually show you what the traditional learning environment looks like. And rather than pulling up, uh, let's say a PowerPoint presentation I have on my computer, I'm going to stick with a uh, Haiku Deck, which is an online version of PowerPoint. Um, you know, it's it's very user friendly. It's easy to create. And so, typically, what happens is, you know, at a PowerPoint presentation, you'll you'll blow it up full screen, and then you'll start to advance the slides, you know, one by one by one. And whether you decide to read the bullet points or not, you know, typically this is where you would talk at somebody rather than talk with them. So, as I kind of back out here. I want to show you what it looks like from the from the dossier aspect is that when you have multiple slides let's say try to do 60 slides in 60 minutes what that does is it it's based off of an assumption that the participants need to know what you know in the order that they need to know it right so and i'll say that one more time because i think once you start to make the connection you'll start to realize that we can engage participants in a new way so for your traditional your powerpoint presentation it's prescriptive you need to know what i know in the order that you need to know it now if we were going to take take a you know ask participants out of the 60 slides they might even say well you know what actually there were only three of those slides that were that were worth it and why would we waste time talking about slides that are that aren't irrelevant or maybe if you you know in some cases where the where the, the material that you're discussing is um, a little bit you know too basic for the participants you might want to skip over some things so typically the, the way that i will start presentations is i will say you know what's what's the number one thing that you want to take away as a result of this session you know, do you want to do you want to save do you want to save time? Uh, do you want to make more money? Do you want to um, you know make it easy? So you know, for, for for this, let's say you know we looked at this webinar here today, uh, Dennis, Jason, George, Georgina. What are some of the things that maybe you want to take away uh, by you know from this webinar so that you can use Doceri a little bit more effectively in the classroom? So go, so go ahead and um, you know. You're saying that you're, you know, you're going around and you, you're using the tablet for the presentation. Uh, uh, Dennis, what, what, are, what are some of the things that you want to you take away from this? Um, I hadn't really thought of that, but uh, <clears throat> I, I want to be able to help my instructors uh, work away from the desk, you know, or work away from the computers from the front of the room. Ah, uh, okay. And, and uh, with those Siri, they can do that, but it's, you know, the size of the pads and stuff, uh, the iPads that they're using, yeah. it's still kind of tight. You know, I think uh, what I want to look at maybe is, maybe they need to go to like the uh, larger uh, iPad or something um, to accomplish what they need to, but still using those you know, the ability to work with the students uh, I, I'm what I want to pick up from you is a better way to do that. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. And Jason, from from our discussion that we've had, is there something that maybe stood out that you want me to elaborate on a little bit more? Uh, what got me excited about what talking talking to you about what you do is um, how your taking your method would be makes makes the teaching experience more um, intuitive so 
where you where rather you're not giving a uh, just a regular direct instruction model you're you do have prepared information but you're wanting you you're you don't go further into the uh, the the presentation until you know what your your students want to know yeah. or what they know first and then you can go from there because you've got a lot of uh, different things prepared a lot of different files or, or um, uh, graphics organizers or charts or whatever you've got it all there on uh, available to you on through doceri um, and can annotate live and then also make a recording so um, each teaching session becomes can become its its own uh, own entity rather than the, like you said the being a pre prescribed um, uh, PowerPoint where you just blow through it and and then take questions yeah Yeah, great, Jason. Thank you. And and what, we're gonna, what I'm going to do is, is I'm actually going to take this in reverse order. I'm going to start with number three, and then I'm going to work backwards towards um, number one. Now, what I've just done is I've hit, you know, I, I can go back and forth between adding new sheets to the presentation. So inside of Doceri app, you, you can open up a new sheet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the photo button, and I'm going to show you um, what I what I like to have as my pre created visuals now one of the things that i've kind of kind of picked up over time was once you have the visual and you have the question you can start to you know move the conversation with in whatever which way that you want so let's let's pretend that you have you know your existing uh powerpoint slides uh, what i recommend doing is is exporting your slides as pictures okay and then once you have these pictures or these images and then you, you, you save them or you synchronize them with your iPad and you categorize them, then you can retrieve them quickly. So rather than, you know, pulling up 60 slides, you're only pulling up the right image at the right time based off of the timeliness of the conversation. So typically what I, you know, I do a lot of strategy work. Um, for for companies and, and for associations. So if we're having a strategy conversation and someone wants to talk about the business model, I know real quickly that I can go to a pre-saved image inside of Doceri in order to facilitate that conversation even further. And I'll give you an example of what that specifically looks like. So this is the this is the general this is the general slide that I'll pull up when I'm when I'm doing strategy. And so if we start on the, if we start on the right hand side, this being um, you know the visual I'll ask you know what are some of the customer segments that you are looking at or who do you, who are you targeting specifically in terms of groups well, so, well somebody might say well I'm, I'm i'm work with luxury buyers or i work with um you know i'm actually focused on the international type of clientele or maybe i'm maybe i'm looking at um those who are who um want new construction right now i would only write it in based off of what they say I would never write it in unless that's what they told me to do. And so typically what we would do is fill, you know, go through every single one of these and start to fill in, you know, this square and this square and this square and this square and this square. And, this square. and so at the end, my entire presentation is about them and I am acting as a facilitator of the process to help them get reach their objectives. So they know their objectives in, in their mind, my job is to kind of pull it out so they can see the end result in a different way um, than you traditionally have been in the past. If we're not talking live presentations, we're talking remote conversations. You know, how much, how much time is spent where others are talking over one another in a conference call? Or how many times do you have a group, even live, right? If, you, if, you're, if you're facilitating a facilitating meeting that, you know, People will say the same thing over and over again, but maybe just in a different way. So when you have the visual in place, then you can start to say, well, we've already covered that. You know, can you be a little bit more specific? Or maybe can we, can we focus in on this, on this square here first and, and block out everything else? That's the power of the visuals. It's, it's, it's a concept called a mental synchronicity. 
where you're on the same kind of same wavelength mentally. And the only, the quickest way to be able to do that is visuals. You know, you've heard a picture is worth a thousand words. A screen share is, is worth a million. Now, if we just take kind of back up here, I'm going to pull up what you had seen before in terms of uh, the whiteboard. Now, if you've used Osiri before, you know that at the very top, here's your little toolbar of different items um, that you can pull up. So, <clears throat> um, what I have done from a, a, a um, an efficiency standpoint, right? Because what you have is you have a lot of things going on specifically in the iPad that you have to control. Whereas as a PowerPoint presentation, you're just clicking the arrow key next, 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 right? So there's a, there's a time to task for you to be able to, let's say, pull up the right, uh, you know, or to choose the, the, the square or to choose the circle or to choose the highlighter or maybe sometimes, you know, when you're facilitating a, a, um, a conversation or facilitating the learning, maybe you want to change the colors. So right here is the black pen. Maybe I want to quickly go from the black pen to the to blue pen. Now, if it takes you, let's say, 20 seconds to do that, that's a significant delay and will actually kind of prolong um, the learning process in a way that kind of it's just it doesn't really connect so there's a time to task for you to be able to do execute things quickly and sometimes that even means um, this one right here this is my favorite one this is the this is the undo button or the oops button so sometimes I'll just go back real quick or sometimes I'll even hit this erase bar so I can or the the windshield wiper so I can start over from scratch or if I want to pull it back I'll hit the undo button and be able to pull it back so from the time to task is extremely important when you're starting to go from one concept to the other because there's this uh, this flow, and you know when you're in flow when you're when you're when you're facilitating learning because there's really no delay from the time of between what comes out of the participant's mouth to what you're able to execute visually to facilitate the learning process. So I'm just going to kind of back up here for a second and then put it from what I've shared so far. What are some of the things that maybe have, uh, you know, maybe resonated with you most? Well, I like what you said regarding the uh, use of slides. I've seen other things where you can focus on what the people are saying and, uh, you know, by quickly moving to the slide, you, you do have a, a real positive uh, reactionary type uh, class. And instead of, you know, I've seen other speakers refer to that as well. And it just, I think it's something that a lot of our instructors don't do because they're, they're set up in a path, a, a certain, I have to get this done. Uh, and they don't have the ability to think out of the box you know, to, to react to the students, uh, as you suggested. Yeah, no, that's really good. Um, uh, Dave, David Dyer has joined us. Um, David says there's uh, long lags cause classroom management issues. Mm -hmm. So like maybe, um, you know, I, uh, several years ago when YouTube came out, right? And then you'd see teachers play a YouTube video. You know, if there was a, if, if it took forever for them to be able to find it, say, oh, well, let me find this video, right? And then they would search around their computer and they would try to dig it out. And then there was bandwidth issues. It causes that delay that, that kind of kills the, the excitement and the engagement of the classroom, which is why time to task to be able to execute the visuals is, is, is was my opinion, you know, critically important. But what um, at, w another thing to kind of think about is it's the concept from going from bulleted list to fill in the blank. And I've already demonstrated this, but when you have a fill in the blank visual, now it's more about them. If you have a bulleted list, now it becomes, you know, you know, if we take a look at, let's say, a lower, um, lower level of learning from familiar with Bloom's taxonomy. <clears throat> This is where it's that more informational, which is good for bulleted lists. But when you get to higher levels of learning where there's, there's, there's some sort of mastery or there's some sort of familiar, familiarity of you know, existing concepts, 
what we want to be able to do is, is allow participants to be able to analyze the material a little bit differently. And so the architecture of the slides, you know, if you have a, if you have the book already, um, screen to screen selling. I've got one here in the box already. <laughs> if you have one of these already, um, chapter five talks about the creation of visuals. So where the, the art, so the, you know, when we think of uh, your, your traditional PowerPoint slide, your traditional PowerPoint slide might be, you know, statistics or it might be research or it might be, you know, there might be a picture in the background. The, the evolution of the slide creation is how you're able to then create it as a process visual so that when you, when you ask the questions, it allows you to then, uh, you know, pull out the best ideas from the participants. Now I want to share with you, I'm going to share with you one more thing in terms of how I kind of do a little bit of work around when it comes to these types of presentations. So <clears throat> when I show up um, at a meeting or an event, big conference, I'll typically show over my laptop computer. Now, what I do that's a little bit differently from other folks is I will, and I'll write this in, is B-Y-O-R, bring your own router. <laughs> yeah. Now, the reason why, you know, we have to bring your own router is because if you try to use the Wi-Fi in the facility and you also have participants that are trying to hop on the same Wi-Fi network that you are, it's there's going to cause a delay and from what you write on your tablet to what the displays on the screen. So it's critically important to ha have your own connection. Now there's, there's, there's two, different, two different ways or the application of this when you're, when you're integrating the internet. Now, so do you, do you need, the question is, do you need your laptop and do you need, um, you know, a internet connection to operate this dossier? The answer is no. If you bring your own router, you know, I use the Apple Airport Express. I bring that with me. I can use Doceria with my laptop, and I don't, I don't necessarily need to be plugged into the internet connection. Now, if, if it's a situation where I'm demonstrating websites and I'm digging deep to actually show the application of how specific websites are used with, re with respect to the participants, then I will need an internet connection and hardwired ethernet cable that's plugged right into my router that then tethers my devices so if I'm using my smartphone or if I'm using my tablet or I'm using my laptop everything's projected so I'm able to display it on the computer screen so as you start to look at your classroom there's multiple ways that you can have it set up just realize let's say you know you just want to be able to try it out real quick and you don't you don't need to have this you know extensive setup you know that that a lot of companies invest money into you don't necessarily need all that if you figure out, you know, better, faster, more efficient ways to be able to integrate those Siri into, you know, your existing outfit. So this might, this might bring up a couple, couple ideas or might, a couple suggestions you might have. Uh, what do you see as far as your facility setup, whether you go from classroom to classroom, or maybe just use one classroom with those Siri? How do you, how do you see this playing out with, with the application of it? Dennis, I'm curious uh, how how uh, Pima College has has is using Doceri, how they got set up. Right now, I have it set up in four classrooms. They're lecture halls. Uh, the oh. once again, the instructors are all science oriented. Most of them are biology instructors, and they're starting to work with that. Uh, the computers, the desktops, and the uh, laptops. Uh, of course, the laptops are on a wireless connection, but they're all on the same uh, domain. And, uh, you know, the, the, um, the licensing they have, the one instructor can work in all four classrooms if she wants, or she can, uh, uh, you know, let somebody else uh, go in with a uh, iPad and use the uh, setup that they have. Uh, licensing was very friendly in that regard. And I don't, I would anticipate the rest of the college in incorporating something very similar uh, where, you know, we'll have it set up on the uh, desktops and 
whoever wants to use it can use it. And then it would be just a matter of showing them how to use Doceri and then trying to come up with uh, strategies that would make it a, a better tool. And that's why I'm listening to this. Mm. Yeah, great. So, I mean, from from what we're from we're talking about, the license for Doceri is only for the computer, like the resident computer that's plugged into, let's say, the projector, right? Absolutely, so right. To be able to synchronize it and use it as the as the telestrator, uh, because I think what you've done, what you can do, and what I've done in the past is sometimes I don't even feed Doceri right into the computer. I'll just do a direct airplay, right? If if the projector or the flat screen or what are the board that's going to show, show the display um, will actually go right right to that right uh, in that particular room or those those particular rooms we don't have that set up we would in other classrooms that we're using yeah yeah great um well, one so, other, doug, so doug yeah. sorry to bust in so what you were talking about uh, using the airport express you've set up a, a ad hoc network right so you, yeah yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, that's that's. People think uh, that you need internet to make the connection between the the iPad and the PC, and, and you don't. You just need a a, a a a wireless router that you plug in to the the electrical socket. Not, you don't need to be connected to the internet, unless you want access to the internet. That is, but uh, that's how I set up my class. Uh, we we just got Wi-Fi. Uh, last year <laughs> can you believe that uh yeah um rural rural uh area in uh, northern california and we just got uh, um we just got wi-fi for the whole district but before that i had a uh a, a, um, a um airport uh, apple airport and uh and i just set it up in my classroom plugged it in and then i would i, I would the only thing i would use it for is is to connect Doceri uh, my, on my iPad to the PC, and it worked pretty well. I didn't. I never. It never went down. And never. So it's actually, in some ways, it was. It was a kind of a better connection that I, or more stable connection than it was than I got with the uh, the, the current Wi-Fi. Occasionally, the Wi-Fi goes down, and but uh, but my my router never w went down. Uh, which I think is what you're saying. Yeah, and there's there's a couple of different ways you can do. It. You could actually set up a network inside of your computer. But keep in mind, I'm I'm not an IT guy. I mean, I'm a, I'm a I'm a marketing guy. I don't know how to set up networks or anything like that. You know, I've, uh, one of the questions off the chat, uh, David uh, says, you know, router that makes it bomb proof. You've seen you've seen another t teacher do this. You know, which router is it? Um, for, so for Apple, there's a couple different routers that I've used in the past. One is a small size hockey puck. <clears throat> it's the Apple Airport uh, Express. Yes, yeah. You know, a hundred bucks. It's a simple, you know, that's all you really need if you're in a small classroom environment. Uh, but you know, I'm I'm working big convention halls sometimes, and I've got there's this distance where mm -hmm. I've got to go. So I I invested in the Apple Airport Extreme. It's yeah. a lot taller. It's bigger, but that gives me confidence going up because the last thing I want to do is, you know, be in a big convention hall and then, you know, walk 30 feet out and then, you know, start, start to engage in the facilitation and then it gets buggy or it stops working or whatever it might, you know, <clears throat> you can't afford to have that delay. So uh, if you're working bigger rooms, I recommend getting the Apple Airport Extreme. The smaller one is, um, you know, 100 bucks. That one's the Apple Airport Express. Um, and I encourage, uh, wel welcome, Aaron. Welcome. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm going to, I'm going to butcher your first name. It's, it's Ginian, and 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 Jorge. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome to the webinar here. Uh, I, I encourage you to ask questions in the chat if there's something that you're thinking about that you wanted me to dive deeper into. Um, I can also share some resources inside of the chat that we can start to take away and start to, start to implementing. But a lot of what we talk about is going to be in the book, uh, Screen to Screen Selling. You know, it was published by McGraw Hedge, Hill Education last year. You know, and McGraw Hill is really big in the education space. I think that's probably why they took on this book because they saw uh, the innovative use of how it pertains to um, not just the sales process. You know, they say teachers make the best salespeople. Uh, 
how you as a teacher can use Doceri in order to facilitate that, that classroom environment in a whole different way. One of the things that I get consistently, seminar after seminar, is the question, Doug, will you send me your PowerPoint presentation slides after the seminar? I mean, how many times do you get that? Or, or sometimes you'll have, have someone looking for my phone here, but, but, they'll, but they'll, have, they'll take their phone and they'll start to take pictures of the slide as they start to go through. And you're thinking, well, is there a way that I can actually make this easy for, for, for others so then that way they can be more engaged in the process and they don't have to be worried about, you know, hopping over somebody's backs to be able to get a really good picture of your slide. So I'm going to go back into the demo. I'm going to go back into the screen share side of, 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 of the Zoom webinar tool to be able to show you specifically what I'm talking about. So um, right now we're going back to where um, the whiteboard, obviously using Doceri. Now I'm going to click on a button that will show you specifically how to share all of your annotations <laughs> in a couple of clicks. And really as you, as you start to look at sharing this, how can you? How, how many different ways can you start to share these these annotations? So, right now, you know, in the last thirty minutes, you know, we're only covering key points. We're not trying to overwhelm you with information. If you want to dive down deeper, you know, I've got the visual outline for the book, and then also the book itself as a as a resource, which I highly recommend you order. Um, it's on Amazon, CEO Read, Barnes and Noble, it's in stores. Have at it. What I just did is I inserted a screenshot of what I would do in order to share all of my slides. Now you see right here where it says of eight. Mm -hmm. So right now I've actually typed this right here. I've hit that button, um, I think seven times already in order to get to this point. So if I wanted to, I'm gonna go back here to show you what I'm talking about here. So this, this is uh, seven of eight, this is six of eight, this is five of eight, this is four of eight, this is three of eight, this is two of eight, and this is number one. So if I go back to, to, to number eight here, all I do is I click the, the right arrow button to share, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this where it says save, share as PDF, and then I'm going to click sh at each slide so that where there's eight, eight slides that we're, that we're looking at. And so the export is going to export eight different slides as in one PDF. Now, if I have that PDF that's saved on my iPad, well, I'll quickly uh, save it into my Dropbox folder, which then creates a link. And then that link I'll then send by text message. I'll send it by email. I'll send it by Facebook Instant Messenger. I'll, I'll even I could even share it right now through the um, you know the the webinar chat if we if we wanted to. So then that way, what, we're, what, what we look at, as far as, I'm going to make some room here. <clears throat> you have, and I think this is, on, this is in Chapter 11, called the Visual Summary. And the reason why this is important from an educational standpoint is because, you know, uh, can, can your participants realistically remember everything that you talk about during a presentation? Well, no, I mean, it's just not, it's just not possible. And even if we were to have a conversation, just you and me, and we were to, to, to outline and, and, uh, and, and, and collaborate and create key points, there's no way we'd be able to, to remember anything, everything, ex you know, unless we were to write it down. So that's what, the reason why this visual summary is a key component of Doceri that will, um, you know, they'll, they'll do a lot of things. They'll incre increase the likelihood that, that others will retain. Retain information. Um, there will be a uh, decrease remorse in the fact that they don't have to remember everything. And what I just did is, is a tactic that I wrote down the word and I drew an X through it. Now, there's different ways of being able to, you know, write characters that um, symbolize symbolize words. So, for example, instead of money, I'll draw the do dollar symbol. Instead of time, I'll, I'll draw a little clock. Instead of, you know, happy, I'll just draw a little happy face. So it's up to, over time, what ends up happening is you start to kind of create better, faster ways of saying the same thing. And really, when we talked about earlier, time to task, the more you do it, the better you get. And then that way, you know, 
you know, you're not you're not writing out an entire sentence. You're you're being very concise uh, about the words that you choose, which then increases the speed at to which you can operate. So, what do you guys think? Looking at time time to task and 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 remembering information and creating value for their participants. How do you see yourselves using the visual summary in your in your classes? I think it would be it would be useful. Wonderful, Georgina. What did she say? She she said it would be useful. Um, those who are are working in the K twelve setting. Uh, be it's it's extremely nice to be able to print that out for any of the kids that that are not great note takers so it's a it's a great accommodation for the kids with uh, learning disabilities and whatnot um, just print it out give it to them have them copy it have them verbally go over it with you whatever um, now Doug how often do you um, <clears throat> use the the record feature for your for your clients oh so the the record video feature? Record, yeah exactly yes. recording uh, you know that, that's that's a good question so um one of the one of the benefits of using doseri is that there is a a little button that i can click record that will not only record my drawings but also record my voice to export it as a video um well frankly i don't I don't use it that often because when I'm recording, I'm actually recording inside of the, the webinar platform. Like right now we're recording, so I'll record it that way. But you know, if I wanted to, to, to create something really quick, it was really easy, and I, we didn't have this entire thing set up, then yeah, I mean, it would be the quickest way to be able to create content to be repurposed afterwards. I forget what chapter it's in, but I, I think it's chapter 19 talks about conversational marketing. You know, as we start to have a conversation and asking questions, and by, by me asking the questions and facilitating this conversation, you start to get the answers that now become content. This conversation becomes content to be able to be repurposed for later, you know, to be able to put it up on YouTube, whether it's for public use for marketing or for awareness, or it's used, you know, internally for, let's say, onboarding or, or uh, you know, onboarding a new student or whatever it might be. So there's a variety of different ways that, that you can have that set up. One of the things that, um, I'm sorry, go ahead. You had, you had, you had another thing that you wanted to, or no? Uh, no, but I like where, where you're going with this. Um, <clears throat> I do a similar thing whenever I'm, I'm in the classroom. I don't have the, uh, the, you know, I'm doing face to face. So I will hit the record button when I'm, when I'm teaching. Yeah. And when the kids have questions, that becomes part of the recording. Yeah. Um, so it's it's nice when if you think if you work as a teacher to try and engage the students in order to get uh, a a good recording session, um, have the students part of the uh, the learning process rather than you just you know talking 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 talking, um, and then you have the 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 record of it as a recording. Then I, and I've given it to kids that have come in like halfway through the class because they were doing something with the counselor or whatever, and then they they can just go access it later, or somebody missed a day or whatever. You never. Kids being out of the classroom is not a deterrent anymore, um, yeah. and they're there. They can hear their peers interacting. That means that their questions are possibly the kids hearing the, the questions are reinforcing what might be important, rather than just me keep going and going and going. There's a stop. There's a stop there um, that that one of their peers have, has made. And they like to hear their, their kids, uh, they try to, oh, who is that? Who, is, who said it? Um, so it's, yeah, I, I, the, the Q&A becomes, now becomes part of your content that you can save and uh, share with, with other students or, or even review, you know, review before a test or whatever. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, and the problem, the problem with those how-to videos is that they're they're one way. I'm talking yeah. at you, right? Yeah. And yeah. the best the best content comes from the questions that clarify the interpretation of the content, right? Yes. I mean, I, I just had this conversation with, with 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 my broker today. We're talking about training. Well, just to watch the videos. No, no, no. I want to hear the questions that other people have, so then that way I can see if I'm on track or if I'm if I'm not. So that's a, that's a really, I'm really glad you, really glad you, you brought that up. Makes me think I want to get a, like a little mic to pass around to the kids. So it, it cause the um, the ambient mic for, on the iPad may or may not catch what they're saying. Right. Yeah. So there's, there's a couple different ways you can work a, a microphone into it. Um, blue, blue, B L U E makes a really good microphone that will do a little bit better uh, for that. Um, there's also little plugins that you know in the iPad that you can the, the head, headphone jack that are that are uh, Bluetooth, so it's a little bit more. You know, you can have how you have microphones set up in, in in different places, all set up through the through the feed. So there's a lot of different ways you could probably set that up, um, because if you're walking around the room, participants at the back, they're not going to be able to be a part of that converse. You're going to have to, you know, even like for audio recordings, you have to kind of repeat the question. Yeah, kind of like kind of, kind of like the, kind of like the same thing. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention, um, why I absolutely um, have gotten so deep into Doceri is because uh, how it was specifically for webinars now, like kind of, so let's kind of like flip flip the classroom to where we're talking about uh, remote delivery. I mean, how many different remote delivery tools are there on the market today? Where where we have a meeting like this. You know, right now we're using zoom.us, Z-O-O-M dot U-S. In fact, uh, Zoom has become uh, very prevalent in the university and education market, where video conferencing classrooms through some of the latest technology, you know, high, high, highly recommended. What else? There's join.me, there's GoToMeeting, there's WebEx, there's Google Hangouts. Um, I mean, those, the list goes on, right? And when we look about look at different features that each webinar platform has, each one of them has its own whiteboard tool inside of it, mm. right? Yeah. Well, think, think about this for a minute. From from time to task, so that means for let's say for eight different webinar platforms that, that we might we might be using, is I have to learn the whiteboard tool inside of in like eight different webinar platforms. That it's almost impossible to learn that many and be efficient at it. So what, what I like about Doceri is it's platform agnostic. So like, like I went into earlier where I shared my screen, you know, the desktop share, then I'm able to kind of control the conversation that way. And, I'm, and I've learned Doceri as the whiteboard app rather than try to learn eight different uh, whiteboard features inside of eight different webinar tools. Yeah. So now you're into um, distance learning, <clears throat> right? Creating content for distance distance learning. Yeah, you know, and there's been situations too where I will do I will do live classroom where I'm in front of let's say you know a group of of thirty or forty, but then I'll activate Zoom with the video camera, and I'll also do screen share. So then that way I'm engaging the participants that are in front of me, but I'm also allowing remote participants to see what I'm doing. And it's not like I've had this elaborate technology set up, or it's not like I have this team of IT that's behind me. No, it's just, it's just me, right? When, because I consolidated the number of tools that I've used, I've been able to become better and faster at it without having to rely on multiple moving parts. And especially if you love technology. I mean, I love technology because it makes me easy, but the more tech that you start to add, more pieces you start to add, the more things can start to go wrong. True. You no, know, you know, if you, if you've had a reboot, you know, five different things in order to make one thing work. Um, it's just kind of silly. Like Come on, it's job security. <laughs> <laughs> so, Doug, do you ever uh, use, I've found, so 
I, I said that I, I uh, record some of my sessions, my uh, class sessions with the, the kids and um, using a record feature. <clears throat> um, but what I've also done is you like say I, 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 I teach uh, four sections of this basically the same class. Uh, in the morning class, if I didn't have a, um, a video that I've made ahead of time, uh, screencast that I made ahead of time, I, I will make it up on the fly um, with, the, with the kids. So, um, so there's that interaction back and forth. But for the, for the following, and I can make a recording as well, but um, without making a recording, I can still use the doseri file that I made in the first period and then play it for the, the following periods just by hitting the, 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 um, the slide, ahead, you know, the playback button, play, pause, play, pause, play, pause. And then I don't have to redraw, because I'm, I'm doing art, uh, basically in art classes. I don't have to redraw it all again and I have more time to be interactive with the kids. So my first period sometimes gets less of, it, uh, less of me than the, the last periods. But I feel like the, since, since Doceri remembers all your strokes that you put on, and then you can put the playback button, you can even put, I even go back sometimes going to that and put, put in stops where I know I wanna stop and talk or st stop and put question and answer. Um, and then play back. Do you do that? No, I don't. <laughs> that's like, that's like, that's like no series 600. I, I am not that advanced. Um, maybe something we can do another webinar where I watch yeah. you, watch more watch you demonstrate it. Uh, but I can definitely see the the application of creating uh, templated content that allows you to build, right? So yeah. like an architect, we're, we're I mean really. As, as an educator, we are architects of learning. And we understand the learning objectives. We understand hopefully where the students wanna go. And so as we start to kind of create this frame or the visual frame or the, you know, the, the templated slide, now we kind of have something that we can build on rather than starting off from scratch. Yeah. So what happens, so, so let, let me kind of like flip this from the conversational aspect, um, you know, let's say it's a sales conversation that, that, that they might have where it's back and forth, back and forth. Mm -hmm. As I start to learn something new about a new customer, or in this case, as I start to learn something about a new participant, what I'm doing is I'm starting to stack on better and faster ways of being able to ex explain the same thing. And so that way I'm not starting off from scratch from, from the first time. But if I forget, or if I don't use Doceri, as my, as my kind of visual anchor to be able to kind of hang ideas on, then I'm consistently starting over and over and over again. And, you know, who wants to do that? No, I mean, that's what you had to do with, with a regular, with an analog whiteboard, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Just erase, do it over again. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think I think also we have an opportunity with is to you know I mentioned creating content. Each conversational piece that we create together now becomes an image that we can put where we can put it up on Facebook, right? We can put it up on Twitter. We can share it on LinkedIn, right? We can even have a contest to see who can create the best image that that visually represents it. So rather than making it, making it about us, now we can put it on them to be able to create the content so you can create the best. Because as I've discovered, is the teachers don't know everything, <laughs> right? The students have more knowledge than the teachers, except it's the, my, my opinion, it's the teacher's responsibility to pull the best ideas out from the students and make it about them, which increases engagement, increases the participation, increases the likelihood they're, they're gonna wanna continue. That's that's what I that's why I love this tool so much. Yeah. Um, questions, guys. I know um, uh, David, Aaron, uh, Janine, and Jorge. If you guys have questions, you want to add into the chat. We've got a couple more minutes, a couple more minutes, you know, before we wrap up. Um, what I, in, in the meantime, while I do this, I'm actually going to pull the. Um, 
pull this pull the slide deck and I'm going to share it inside of the chat window that way you you can at least have that and then you know the book screen is screen selling itself it's available on on amazon.com Kindle format hardcover um, you know they didn't do paperback so you like paperback paperback sorry um, no audiobook yet but hey we, we <laughs> Probably be working on that soon. I guess you know it's kind of hard to do an audiobook on a on a on on, on a content that's very visual. Um, so you know it's kind of I don't know, a little bit tricky. Did you say there was ebook? Um, it's available on Kindle. Kindle. You know the benefit of of using the Kindle is that on Kindle there are, there are links that you can click on, active links that you can oh. click on to be able to take you to those tools to be able to experiment with. You don't have to type it in somewhere else. I gotta tell you, you know, from, from an implementation standpoint, I love the app Wonderlist. Um, it's just a quick app, it's free. If you're using, I don't know, what kind of computer do you have? Do you have an Apple or a Mac? Uh, that's a trick question, by the way. If you're <laughs> Thank you, nice, nice. Uh, you know, if you have Android or Windows, it, it works for both. I think, in fact, Microsoft bought Wonderlist because it became so popular. Um, it's a quick tool that allows you to start to build a checklist of websites to be able to implement, or maybe even dele delegate it out, you know, as far as project management goes. That's my, that's my implementation app. That's, that's free. Uh, you know, in many of the, many of the technologies mentioned in the book and what we talked about, very low cost. You know, it's not thousands of dollars that you, that you would invest in. Very, very low cost. Nice. It's... <laughs> As I look at brainstorming, as I look at strategy, you're really working with a white board, right? And can you can you type it out? Sure, you can. But as far as like drawing out, you've, maybe you've done map, mind mapping before. The more ways that you're able to visually express an idea, the faster it starts to sink in your mind to where you can express it into different ways. You know, so there's multiple t types of intelligences. There's the, you know, the auditory intelligence. There's the kinesthetic where you're actually involved. There's the visual. Um, the more of those types of intelligences you can, you can kind of build into it, the faster you'll be able to kind of learn it, memorize it, and be able to explain it to others. I forget what chapter in the book that is, but man, I, the more that I've done this, now it becomes, the, it's, it's so quick. I don't even, I don't even, I don't even think about it. And I, what I feel as far as the differentiator is how quickly an individual can learn and be able to explain it to somebody else will be the difference. You know, as we start to look at, at, at innovation, you know, with, with computer, with computer science, with um, programming, you know, even, even there's kids now that are going to school, they're, they're learning this, you know, seven years old, uh, they're learning how to program. It's just, it's just fascinating. So this as a tool to be able to accelerate that, I, I believe um, is the future. I have to tell you, there are enterprise apps that are out there that are a little bit more robust that you can do this visual collaboration, um, you know, together. We you know do a series more, is more, it's one person that kind of controls it. Um, but, you know, relative to the cost, yeah, it's a free app, right? What did you, I, I forget, what, what's the connection from the app to the computer? Is it 30 bucks? 40 yeah, bucks? Yeah, the, the Doceri desktop is $30. I mean, come on, you know, it, there's nothing more reasonable that's a fast pace than, than what we're working with right now, in my opinion. Right. And then you talk about uh, if you're, we were talking about um, with uh, Dennis, uh, how many uh, uh, smart boards they have at, at Pima right now. And you buy, compare a smart board to who, who basically, what it basically has a one, one, it's a one hit wonder, you know, it has, it has one use, but Doceri is on an iPad. You buy an iPad and you can do a whole bunch of other stuff than sides. So why would you buy that expensive hardware, which is going to be out of date within like five years or so, anything? then you got to update the hardware. We've had the iPad 2s since 2011. And they're still going. They're about on their way out because there's no. <laughs> but they still. I still have iPad too, so they still work well as, uh, as well as anything. 
Uh, I think Jorge wanted to join in on the conversation. Jorge, I'm going to add you in. How are you today? I think you're on mute. We'll go ahead and unmute you. We're getting close to the end here, but I want to make sure that you have a chance to say hello. We can't hear you yet because you're still on mute. Let's see if we can get you off of get you off of mute here. Okay, can you hear me now? I can. Thank you. Please. Okay. No, I just want to thank you. Uh, I want to be honest to you. I just discovered Doceri about three days ago, and uh, the reason I raised during this uh, webinar is because I wanted to learn more about people that uh, already use it. Uh, I'm an English teacher here in Peru. It's far away from you. Okay, Lima, Peru. And I teach grown-ups in a very special schedule. These people are usually late. And uh, the way I see it, you know, I can use the recording feature so I can start my class. And if somebody arrives late, I can send the, the, the recording. I can upload it to Dropbox or any other uh, tool. And uh, something about the pictures, since I have to teach vocabulary, grammar, I have to do reading comprehension, listening comprehension, and uh, well, you know, all the skills that you need to, to master the English language, this is a great tool. And when you talked about the pictures, I thought, no, that's what I do, because every time I, I think about uh, maybe a combination of words, sometimes I even use abbreviations, I use acronyms, I use pictures that I have to draw in just a flash. And uh, so uh, you were right. Sometimes a picture speaks better than, than many words. You know? So I'll be joining you if you have any other webinar, for sure I'll be joining you guys. And it was really interesting, OK? And yeah, thank you, thank you no, for saying hello and your participation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. I think we're, that was a great session. Yep. Great guys. Well, I have a ton of videos. I have a ton of content. It, it is geared towards the sales component of it and the sales conversation, which is still early. You know, a lot of folks are still selling over the phone and having conversations on the phone. What I, what I would encourage you to look at is those videos and everything else that's out there is how do I relate that to the classroom? How can I engage participants using the same kind of methodology and the fill in the blank and everything? And boy, you're going to be off and running. I, I please, keep, please keep in touch. You know, share with me what you're doing in the classroom. You know, there might be a time. Uh, I've I've been to Ar I've been to Buenos Aires. I haven't been to Lima yet, so there'll be a, there'll, there'll be a time soon. It's the, about time. <laughs> hey Doug, do you have that link, that, that audio interview that you took took place uh, took part in? Um, about your use of doceri? Um, maybe, maybe, maybe what we'll do is I'll send that to you after the webinar or after, after our conversation here. And then we'll, there'll be this recording. So if you want to go back and watch some of the things that I did specifically, you know, you have, you have the ability to do that. So a couple of links that are shared and then you guys, you guys have, have at it. You know, the one thing I ask is, uh, you know, please get the book. Please let everybody know this is a movement. You know, this is a, yeah. There are very few people that are really doing facilitated learning uh, out there. And so the more it starts to catch on, boy, I think that we can make an impact uh, much, much quicker together. Okay, my friends, right. thank you again. Thank you very much, Doug. Buenas, buenas noches. Okay, bye-bye. Adios. Bye. Good night. Bye.